teleports in that first game for themselves. Terezla, Kufra, Terezla, a good, you know, follow-up initiation behind the Kufra. It, it goes both ways. The Kufra can engage first, Terezla jumps in, or the Terezla sets up for the Kufra in the team fights, but they've been at the high loss. The teams ha today has, hasn't been picking the high loss nope. first phase, even if it was open. Yeah, uh, very different to yesterday where we did see a lot of high-lows prios. I would say uh, it was the Evos and RQ game that we saw a lot of high Well, it was always banned out as well, to be fair. I think it was... When was the high-lows, like, super prio? Because well, yesterday, number one. the game one, Ultra Ego, that's when they when we lost 100% winner in the high-lows. So maybe, yeah. if you play it a certain way, if you're able to just dive in, like these compositions have been built to do, the high-lows doesn't find as much value. It's maybe just great up against front to back, you know? Especially for front to back when you have good sources of damage in the backline, good AoE as well to supplement it. It's just an issue that there's a lot of immobile heroes in the meta for the longest time that can do a lot of damage, but can't really deal with getting overwhelmed and ran over. Yep. So that Hylos kind of denies all of that just because you're as good as, uh, let's say, the Aurora is. You can't stop the Hylos long enough before he gets to you, right? And you get slowed as well and the, his whole team is running at you. So it kind of effectively denies heroes like that. And so unless you're going with that kind of style, it's a whole different story. Right now though, with the Valentina ban for Rebellion... Hmm. They deny that. I guess they're just concerned about the Vexana, yeah, right? the Vexana. And getting the Eternal Guard stolen. An extra body, they can tank some of the Quad Shadows as well. Uh, the Ogi Shadow kill as well. Mm. Could be a solution. The x work is what is banned by Fnatic Onik. A great matchup against tanky heroes like the Kufra, like the Terizla. Yeah. Now for Rebellion Esports down to their last ban. I feel like they're standing on the margin, just coning down the options of Fnatic Onyx. But their setup though is so good. Again, Terezla, Kufra, and the Rogers still able to be flexed. That versatility is something that they have in their hands. For Rebellion Esports, will they go back to how they want to play this game again? Will the Faramis be... Like, does mm. Rebellion actually want to go up against the Faramis, or do they want to ban it out here? Because they already banned out the Valentina, relic. turns out they banned the Aurora. So Faramis the is still up for grabs, and shout out to LaFell, because he brought this to my attention, I think it was MSC 2023, where he says that a lot of pro players see the Faramis as um, a hero that is weak against the Hayabusa. Oh, because no. the Hayabusa has a way to just jump into the Faramis before a fight even happens to bait out the Netherrealm by assassinating the Faramis, but they still do go for the Faramis. Sans is very... Very Unfair. skilled on the Faramis, so, yeah. so it's, it might mm -hmm. be a bit different in this matchup, like in this particular matchup for the for Ryota, he's gonna have to think of a way to actually bait out the Nether Realm. But there is still the Vexana that can kind of crowd control everyone twice technically if they're corralling so close to each other for that Nether Realm benefit. I think they have to add another crowd control tool right here, or more damage tools for Fnatic Onic if they want to try and play with a sustain game, right? It's a full-on dive, and technically everyone is tanky. But for Rebellion now, with all the crowd control, with, uh, with the Cho as well, we're gonna round it out with a Melissa and the Edith showing up again. So this might still be a EXP Edith, right? Most yeah. likely, more recently seen in the EXP. But that Melissa being a solution here, or the dive on, from Onik. Oh man, that's yeah. the problem though. When you show the Melissa here, Claude and Moskov, those are the two picks you go for usually when you see the Melissa. So in lane, Matt is not really going to be able to fully bully the Claude. Claude has ways to win out against the Melissa. It is one of the counters actually to go up against the Melissa. But in team fights, that's why Rebellion left the Faramis open. They have so much AoE. My question is, is it going to be Edith XP or Cho XP? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the Melissa pick, I feel like they're playing anti-dive here for Rebellion Esports just trying to hinder the dive potential coming in from Fnatic Onik. We have the counter index and the lineup rating. His favorite Fnatic Onik. It is going to be Audi though on yep. the Cho, so the Ooh. upstart in the MPL tries to go up against Keyboy on his signature pick, the Kufra, that he has made countless plays on. Who will come out on top? Is it the big initiation moments? Is it the pickoff from Audi TZ? Ladies and gentlemen, Finally, we're making our way to the Lanadon for the final game of match number one of the day. Down to the last wire, the Sky Kings against the Blue Bulls. Will Rebellion Esports once again Welcome rewind, repeat it, with Legends. another upset against Onyx Esports in game number three.
It's so cool to see this, right? Audi bringing up the Cho against Keyboy, and Matt bringing up the Melissa against Jeyway. Jeyway. Yeah, the Melissa. How does it really operate later on as the game progresses, Arashi? The Melissa? Yeah. It's kind of strong in the lane with some bully potential. Audi, though, gets pulled back, takes a lot of damage. He can kind of poke in the lane, kind of. Later on, you're just relying on everyone's, everyone, having everyone kind of sticking together and dealing a ton of damage with the muddles. And you have a lot of security as well with the getaway from these heroes that have to get up close and personal to have a lot of effect in, in the team fights. So it kind of suits, uh, it's kind of suitable to be used against a team that wants to disparage. Look yeah. at the Sans. Just pulling Swaylo out of the lane, forcing Audi to come back here. And he has to be careful because he knows Keyboy is somewhere around these bushes. <laughs> That's the, the hidden benefit of playing the Faramish, man. You have an extra layer of sustain from your passive when you pick up the souls from the lane. Ryota reaches level 4 right here though, so Fnatic Onik need to be a bit careful. And I wonder what Albert's plan is on the Roger, right? Is he just going to try and out-farm? Is he going to try and do something as Ryota oof, gets kind of close to Audi? Trying to make a play right here. Whereas for Albert, he's just a lot more passively farming, mm -hmm. trying to just get some more resources to the late game. Uh, so like kill potential coming in from Rebellion Esports early on the game is quite threatening and perilous towards Albert. And you can take a look at Matt just popping up the medals and yeah, kind of outzone CW, but CW does have the mobility though this time. He has a purify, but that won't help him in the skirmish. Oh, he almost took that gold, the gold minion. That would have been tilting for Matt, but. He is able to just give it back still to Matt, getting a lot of pressure there. Cars gonna go for the steal. Audi walks up, forcing Albert to use the retribution. It's pressure in the bottom lane, traded in for a neutral objective for Fnatic Onik. Well, familiar sight right here. We side CW. Lupido gets jumped on. Three members. Audi, no way to drag and Lupido still able to flicker out of the terrify that Swelo placed down. So he still gets out. Fortunately for him, Swelo was not level four just yet, so no eternal guard to add to the crowd control. Look at this, Fnatic Onyx, from just farming, from just efficiency around the map at least, they're doing a lot better than Rebellion. With the first turtle secured in their hands as well, seems like they're curbing the, the pressure, the early game snowball of this troll Hayabusa combo a lot better. Now he still doesn't have to weigh the dragon just yet, so he has to be careful here. Has a shot, Boo gets out, Muddles placed down there. The keyboard will be zoned away, he finally gets level four for Wade the dragon. Yeah, but Come the late game, I feel like this Melissa could be an ever-looming threat towards Fnatic Onyx. I mean, again, the anti diver to go away, but this time around, the oh, Rage. Revenge and the Rage Eternal Guard popped down. Good Shadow Kill to try to escape. Ryota, wow! Woo! Get into the minions there with the Shadow Kill. And up top, Cars. The final Wrath Wicker in forward. Penalty zone. Look, trying to run away. Dodge away with the Earth Shatter. Look, Oh my goodness, Look, P! Allahu Akbar, Look, P! as they get the first blood for Albert. And Fnatic Onik, they escape death. What a play by Lutpi, man. That is unreal. He was so, so close to do that against Cars, a very mechanical player himself. And look at everyone just dodging away from these massive plays. A credit to Sway Low, though. He was the, one of the reasons why Ryota was able to survive right there. Hey. The Eternal Guard kind of buy some time for Ryota to get out with the Quad Shadow with a turtle coming up. You can see the rotations coming in. Can Fnatic Onik look for more outplays right here? We haven't seen Sans pop off with a Nether Realm just yet. Can Aldi maybe force it out before the fight even begins with the, uh, the Way of the Dragon? It's gonna be a free turtle, it seems. No contest. Aldi trying to just hover over. Cars is in position. Look at Ryota, who's still all the way in the bottom side. Keyboy! Keyboy! Archer Bench could terrify. Great peel from Swaylo. That could have been a kill. Another one to Fnatic Onik. Wow, that was a very fast recovery from the card control that we're seeing from Audi. I have to see, though. Know, Fnatic Onik definitely have more pressure around the map. Keyboy and the Kufra is nothing to uh, underestimate. And Audi recognizes it, man. He's just trying to dance around uh, outside of the bushes just in case on the off chance that Onik are also in the vicinity. And even look at Matt, forced to back away. This might be how Fnatic Onik are planning on just taking this turret. Revenge, charged up. Matt's still there. Keyboy decides oh, to use the bouncing oh, oh, ball, oh. canceling out the Jeet Kune Do there. Meanwhile, in the bottom side river, Ryota with the quad channel. Just chunking Lupi, forcing the regen. Matt is still there. Oh. Bottom lane, a full dive here. Oh, the go away gets him out for a bit, oh, but oh. Albers like can pounce. Penetrates through the go away. Keyboy gets a timer's revenge. Pitching. Oh, no! Oh. 
strikes them all the way with a stampede. That's a triple for Albert. The national steam star. He pops off. And the anti-dive coming in from the Rebellion Esports does not work. It does not go away. Fnatic Onik, all hands on the steering wheel this time. You thought you've seen everything, but Gila Sans finds a way to get in there and get an extra pull in with a with a pull. Getting two for the price of one. Fnatic Onik with an insane dive right there. They deleted Matt all the way in the beginning. This is a Melissa that ran with the Inspire, by the way, so a lot more vulnerable. And Audi! Oh, finding the kick off the sounds right here into the Earth Shatter, and now the full follow up from Matt. Ooh, very Great good play. setup. Very clean coming in from Audi CS with the kick as well. And that is also a very important kill towards Sans, but again, Fnatic Onik there really leading in terms of gold and in every department ever. This time around the turtle, though, it's going to be very important for Fnatic Onik. Definitely very critical. Look at Audi, already spotted out. Sans though, he was already back on the map, so if there's anyone that Onik will let go and allow to get picked off, Sans is a great, uh, a great selection there, because he can respawn a lot faster with the passive. Look at his internal guard though. Oh, 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 oh. Tyrus Revenge and the Rage now all in with the Nether Realm! None of their HP bars! Who's now? Audi dying in the midst of it all. That's a shadow kill. Keyboy just stands there menacingly. Riona, the hammers are coming down. Albert is godlike on the Roger. 7 0 and 2. Fnatic Onik wiped the bulls off the land of dawn. Fortunate strings of events for Fnatic Onik. Keyboy with the play. Albert slowly touching godhood. And this time, Rebellion Esports, they have to defend their ranch. Will the blue bull bulls fall? I feel like Fnatic Onik not poised to end the game, but they're chasing. I don't know about this. Engaging Whoa. on Keyboy. Primal Wrath used up. Keyboy's still alive. And now with the Keyboy. Purify Sans gets out. Albert oh. coming in for the cleanup. That's two. Now looking for a third. Albert. Car's going to be gunned down. Another triple for Albert. The fadeaway. Oh my lord. Fnatic Onik. Don't get him angry, man. You will not like them when they're angry. Turning it up almost immediately. And look at Rebellion. Losing three members off the bat yet again. Losing turrets left and right. They have lost control of the game completely. What can they do here? Falling further and further behind with their frontliners. Getting squishier and squishier in the face of Albert and CW. Oof. Seems like the counter initiation for Rebellion Esports was always there. They're looking for a play after an aggression happens from Fnatic Onik. But Fnatic Onik just corral around them. I mean, Albert is 10, 10 oh for God's sake. This Roger is unstoppable this time. And CW doesn't even need to do the heavy lifting because Fnatic Onik, their execution has been perfect. Rebellion Esports left without an answer. Even the, even the Melissa in the hands of Matt, the go away hasn't been able to shoo away the players of Fnatic Onik. It's finally a two out of power spike for the Melissa with the Golden Staff. It's only one item for Ryota. Oh, As a juggle, no. he has one item at almost nine minutes. <laughs> he is just not allowed to play the game. Look at that, even till the end. Oh, Lutpi. Oh, Conceal forced out Lutpi. Will he do it? No, he won't, he won't. Oh, Keyboy might though. Oh, finding an angle to go for Tyrus Revenge. CW, BMI forward, forcing the Eternal Guard and the Earth Shatter out. Ryota, he's waiting in that bush. No one, no one knows he's there. Shh. Okay. Who's he oh, looking CW. for? Looking for a play? coming in. Oh, he doesn't decide to go in just yet. No, wait, what is Riota waiting for? Nice oh, recall. recall. Wait, does CW spawn him? Wait. Oh my, he's canceled the recall. Okay, he recalls again. <laughs> BMI. Oh, okay. What's going on, dude? <laughs> it just goes on. The secrecy in Riota, though. Thankfully, oh, Skypiercer. Yeah, there won't be a play for, for Riota to maximize from that brush, but the Lord marching in this time. Oh, he's trying to go win for the Earth Shatter, loses a chunk of his HP. This is the first Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Fnatic Onyx, maybe, trying to break the record of MPL ID Season 14. The fastest game was 11 minutes and 40 seconds, I believe, yesterday. Oh. Audi CS tracked back by the Shadow Stampede. Albert taking a shot from the base turret. Now Keyboy finding a good Tyrant's Revenge, but is unable to collapse on it. Now Eternal Guard coming down. Now another oh, round well. two. Matt losing out all of his HP. Ryota scratched down. Matt getting into the fountain there to get some HP. CW's getting him down. Now with a win of Crown. Keyboy finds a revenge and the rage, but it's canceled now. 10 minutes and 13 seconds. They break the record. The blue balls fall under the might and the wrath 
of the Sky Kings. Legendary plays all around the board. 2-1 finish for Fnatic Onyx as they refuse to go down on defeat. Man, oh man. You thought a rebellion was gonna start was strong and take down Fnatic Onyx. But Fnatic Onyx has been here before and they are unwilling to let history repeat itself. They deny Rebellion completely, man. Shutting down everything that they have. The farming, the rotations, the pickoffs. The team fight that we were praising so much in game number two is just nowhere to be seen. Completely steamrolled and demolished in the final game 